Hey, this is Huckleberry, and you're listening to the Unbelievers Podcast. There were several groups. One of the principal ones was the reptilians from the Iran complex. Without any exaggeration, it was like being on fire inside. Rats were anything on inside. This stuff was in my mouth. It felt like it was 500 years. It was unbelievably first question would be, were you a member of the Church of Satan, a card-carrying member of the Church of Satan? I don't understand. There's always an argument for everything, you know, just because um, somebody can fake something doesn't necessarily mean it's a war and we found a life form. And that's when I started shitting my pants. So for the person who called, um, I am carrying an alien. An alien, alien baby, and we cover it right here, okay? okay. Something is happening. What is it? That's the question. So do you have those exist? Depends on what you mean exist. Lurking in the wilderness of the Garden State is a seven-foot-tall creature that has terrified local fishers for years. A leathery-skinned insectoid with strange abilities that many believe to be some form of cryptid. But is it really a cryptid? Or possibly an alien? Or a strange mutation or hybrid? Tonight, we follow the tale of the second weirdest monster from New Jersey. A beast known for ruining the pants of unsuspecting sportsmen and bringing ecstasy and completion to female channelers the world over. So, join us now as we enter the muck and debunk the cuck of the big green creeper himself. So strap on those new fishing sneakers because it's time to talk Mantis Man! Right here on the program, we continue to learn to unlearn... Everything you know! Hello and welcome to the Unbelievers Podcast. I'm your host, Russ Ryan, and joining me tonight is my co-host in California, Drea Mora. Hello, Drea. What's up, Russ? And in West Virginia, our co-host, Brendan Shea. Hello, Brendan. Hey, Roderick. Thanks for having me back on the show. It's great to be back. (laughs) Yes, welcome back. And, of course, on Long Island, our soundboard engineer and producer, Rob Oakey. No, you are not coming into my head. You are not taking me over. And you are not, not going to violate my free will. What's up, guys? Hey, Rob. No. Hey, good... Good to have you guys all here, uh, coming back off a rare week off, where we got a nice little break, but uh, I think this is coming out on Thanksgiving Day, so I gotta ask you guys, uh, we all kind of established, we all kind of came from religious backgrounds, have you guys ever do the, uh, had to lead the prayer for Thanksgiving Day, do do you guys family still do that? Oh, God, no. (laughs) Go do a blessing, a Thanksgiving blessing? I think I did one time when I was a kid, and and I just froze up, and they never let me do it again. (laughs) Yeah, you did that on purpose to escape your future duties. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what I had <laughs> duty. What, what about you, Brendan? You ever had to lead some kind of a uh, blessing for a family? Yeah, we, you know, sometimes they'd find a prayer for you to lead, but most of the time it was the, you know, basic classic bless these, O oh Lord, for these thy gifts spiel that we did because we were Catholics. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to do it yeah, quite a few times and I have a huge family and I froze up quite a bit too. <laughs> yeah, I think I did too. I, I remember just like, Doing started thing doing like God is great, God is good, let's thank you, amen, and like getting it wrong. Something, something, <laughs> but, something, food, yeah. But you know what else is always praying with his praying hands? The thing we're talking about tonight, it's Mantis Man, praying Mantis oh, Man. Oh, yes, yes. Tonight, tonight we'll be talking about a very strange creature, one that I am not really sure how to classify. Some refer to as an alien. Others believe it's some form of cryptid. In both cases, the description is nearly identical. A seven-foot-tall mantis man! Now, when I when I say mantis man to you guys, what's the first thing you think of? Um, that guy from kind of right? Space Coast, Coast to Coast. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, Zorak. Zorak. Uh, Zorak. Oh, yeah, Zorak. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, don't, I, don't I think Zorak is on the great end, and David Huggins oh, is on the terrible end, because you think these, are these Mantis <laughs> aliens. Maybe he's not oh, Mantis Man. But yeah, we've been talking about a lot of different, um, not men, but like cryptid, half cryptid, half ugly motherfuckers, who are it's pig man, we got dog man, grass man. Like, so when you hear mantis man, I don't want to think about half man, half man. Is that a hair? <laughs> when it's a seven foot tall mantis man, it's a, it's mostly mantis. I don't. There's not a lot okay. of man there. And the whole cuck label we've given him, well, maybe that's not fair. Or maybe it is. We will start now. We're going to start talking about sightings of this creature in the cryptid world. Now, we've heard a lot about the mantis alien with David Huggins, but this is the cryptid. And here's the introduction to the terrifying mantis man of New Jersey. Less than an hour west of New York City is a remote part of New Jersey known as the Forgotten County, the musk Kong River. Its headwaters start in backcountry wilderness. And what's lurking there has become a topic of rumor. Reports about a terrifying creature. It resembles an insect, but something much too massive. A monstrous mutant. It was reactive to me. You could see that it was uh, very intelligent, whatever it was. The creature showed me the width of its scales and its chest and how strong he could be. And that was completely terrifying. It's Mantis Man. (laughs) The cryptid. That's so funny. (laughs) This is definitely not the alien. It is spooky music as always from that great show, but that's that's just the introduction. This sounds a lot scarier than what we've heard of a Mantis creature before. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell? It does sound scarier. The thing that cracked me up and... uh... I don't know if it was the same for anybody else, but he's, uh, he showed me how strong he could be. I just yeah. became like flexing. I laughed, just, like, I laughed at that. Phone books. And- <laughs> he made it sound strangely sexual the way that he yeah. did for some he's like, He showed me, he showed me, me how big his scales could scales be. Scales were. And his chest. It's like, all he's right, presenting. relax, buddy. Yeah. Relax. We get it. He had a big chest. Yeah, well, I yeah. guess that's why he's a cook in the end, because he's just trying too hard. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about this one, but we're going to meet the first unfortunate soul to see... Mantis Man. Music's not scary, though. Paul Jacks is an avid fisherman. He frequently visits the rivers and streams of the New Jersey region. New Jersey gets a bad rap. This is actually a very beautiful area. A lot of parks, a lot of rivers, a lot of lakes. I've been fishing all my life. My father was a fisherman, so I started around three or four. In the spring of 2006, this experienced fisherman got an invitation to try the fishing somewhere new. So this particular day, my boss said, why don't we try going to the Muskinacon? I had never been there before. It was a creepy place. (laughs) Yeah. And people forget this is the Garden State. And there's lots of natural beauty and wilderness in Jersey. People forget that about yeah, Jersey. I'm, I'm sure there defending is. defending New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll let you defend it. I don't, I've never spent too much time out there. But what I'm confused about, is it like a regional thing where they just throw the in front of things? Like, yeah, we just had to do the fishing somewhere else. And other people don't realize how pretty the New Jersey can be. Yeah, that's well. It's a, it's a regional. It's a regional New Jersey thing in New York. Okay, you do the okay. fishing. You know, you do the uh, <laughs> you do the grocery shopping. You know, you you just throw a, a the in front of it. Uh, the, yeah, you and then they make there, fun of us on the here. West Coast for saying over you know there, the yeah. four hundred five or the one hundred one freeway. So you guys throw in the thes too. How come they were playing like Bayou music, like they were going like in the swamp or something? Like it kind of sounded like and like with a porno it, bounce to it. It was weird. <laughs> it looks really swampy out there, man. It's not. Uh, it's not what. Like I said, it's it's Jersey's the the natural state. There's a lot of uh, lots of natural beauty in there. Garden State, rather. But we can hear more state. now. We can hear more now from the Paul Jacks and when he was on this trip <laughs> with his the boss. When we entered the river, my boss asked me, "Which way do you want to go?" This place is just way weird. I'll go upstream. So I started moving, wading across the river and down. That's when I saw the movement. On the bank, something hideous and huge. 
when I first saw the creature, I was like, what, what the heck is that? <laughs> this thing had the skin of a snake. Where our abdomen is and where all our organs are, it had a very narrow core. The creature's eyes were black, very large, but set in the front, so it had binocular vision. And those insect eyes had Paul in its sights. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. Kind of creepy, yeah. <laughs> I love when Thanks, people Shreya. give these descriptions. Whenever they have to give descriptions, <laughs> they always just sound like this lady. Like that. It was, it went down, it went off like this. <laughs> it's always the most exactly. vague. The most vague description of what happened, and you have to just right, use right. your imagination. Well, yeah, Dre I had to say, too. Dre had to say something about the the the, the, the thing, the. and now, yeah, now like now <laughs> that's, that's all, all I hear, hear is the the the. <laughs> Did you hear him say the what the heck? Yeah, <laughs> it's way creepy well, out welcome. here, guys. It's way well, the it's, creepy. It, it's gonna get stranger still with more from Paul Jacks. This thing seemed to be very concerned with me. <laughs> I sensed astonishment, whether it was because I was in the water, whether it knew that I could see it. It was very aware that I was aware of it, and that seemed to concern it because it never took its eyes off of me. It was moving up the bank away from me, but looking back over its left shoulder directly at me. For Paul Jacks, time stood still, and when the clock ticked again, the creature transformed. This thing was fading very quickly as it moved up the bank. And all that time, never took its eyes off of me. It was one, two, three, <laughs> gone. <gasps> oh, it, it disappeared on him. This thing and has it counted. Like and it was watching him. It's not really losing that cuck status so far. And what a <laughs> boy, disappearing. <laughs> Talk about a cuck superpower if it can disappear too. If he can just one, go play soundboard clip two. number one, please. One, two, three, <laughs> gone. <laughs> Could you imagine that though? Like something staring at you, like just walking backwards and just disappearing and, and just staring at you the whole time. Like, oh God. Yeah, I can totally imagine that. It was My walking God. away and looking over its shoulder while it did this. So it took like four yeah. steps. One, one two, two, three. <laughs> gone now he's so enthusiastic in that thing. yeah <laughs> what a gone. badass he's just Dude. being all cool Paris gone looking over so, his yeah. shoulder yeah so so this mantis man could disappear and here is more <laughs> on that it vanished completely but I'm, I'm sure that it was still there now that it was cloaked it might be anywhere paul was more at risk than ever in the natural world the praying mantis has evolved an uncanny ability to mimic its surrounding terrain. Camouflage capabilities are one thing, but a giant mantis man secretly roaming the New Jersey countryside? <laughs> and maybe you question yourself, you know, did that really just happen? But it did. It was a praying mantis man. That's the only way I could describe it. All right. Now, he sounds believable, right? He's just this average fisherman. He's dragged to a creepy spot by his boss. And the boss, they also pray, pray, they portray him as kind of a jerk, too. I don't know why they added that. He must not work for him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice that. Um, yeah, I don't know. So far, he's just sounds staring. Like it, it does sound creepy. Yeah, just to be stared at at all. Yeah, exactly, Brendan. The fact that it's aware that you're aware that it's aware. It's That is kind of creepy. Yeah, for sure. And they end up bringing in a local investigator and an author, this guy named Lon Strickler. And he has this to say. Over the years that I've been investigating it, I'd say that I've received maybe four or five different encounters. I'm not sure if the, the, the river is used for food, but the fact that the first two sightings did happen in an area so close to each other and that the witnesses did not know each other is fairly remarkable. Oh. Fairly. Remarkable. <laughs> remarkable. Yeah, like, yeah, there it is. I'm <laughs> noticing now nobody sounds very enthused about this. Uh, a mantis man they're seeing. And some of the footage is remarkable. 
Yeah. The, the way that guy it, it, it talked, though, sound he, like, he, yeah, he doesn't sound like it was very the well. The way that he was talking and describing it, sound he almost sounds like uh, Dan Aykroyd's character on Arachnophobia when he's talking about spiders. Like, yeah, well, you know, oh. we got them down here, and they go after this, and you know, just real laid back, like, oh yeah, yeah, you know well, what, mantises. 